Hi Sagittarius, it's Power and Light Tarot coming at you with the reading. Today we have, what are their true intentions in love? Yes, we do. I hope you guys are all well and uh, mm -hmm. I hope the camera's straight. I feel like it's straight enough. So we have your cards, Sagittarius, and these cards are, they've been picked. I'm just doing it uh, today like this, not really picked, but kind of randomly and, you know, um, so, you know, I put the cards out here because this is how I want to do it today, but I'm looking at your reading and I can see your whole reading here and it's a great reading. Uh, and we have somebody here who wants to really kind of, you know, make things happen with you. They want to grow things with you. Uh, I feel like they want to grow old with you. Yeah. It's the kind of person I think you're dealing with here or the dynamic, right? So we start here with, uh, with this card here, and this is the clover, right? The clovers. And so this is about something that happens suddenly, typically. It is definitely about growth. It can be good luck. But uh, these clovers come in, uh, they kind of grow overnight, right? And so, uh, kind of like weeds, right? <laughs> and uh, that's what's going on here. I feel like this person's going to come in. We also have the marriage card here, and it's next to this whip card. So the whip is stress. Somebody's stressed out because they're married and they couldn't be with you or they want to marry you or both. Yeah. Because whoever's coming in here is, uh, is like, wow, Sagittarius is, you know, is a star, is an angel. Um, they don't really know you Sagittarius, just teasing. <laughs> uh, you know, they just think you're really great. Right. And so we also have the angel of abundance. So here she is, right. They're showing this woman here. And uh, she's sitting here with her, uh, her kind of wand that's kind of a flower. And then she's holding, you know, all this wheat, whatever kind of grain she's holding. I'm sure it's organic, right? Or uh, all she can't be in that picture, Sagittarius, all right? <laughs> so this is the angel of abundance. And so she, uh, you know, these angels in this deck are all about, this is just her. She's an angel and she's an empress at the same time. But somebody wants this with you. I feel like they are coming here the way she's holding the wheat, right? And her flower, which is kind of a wand. I feel like this person's coming with, with a gift because this, in this reading, this energy is only like, gee, I want to do, I want to do my best. I want to show my best. Uh, I want Sagittarius to respond. Uh, it could be even to accept me. Haven't really looked at the tarot cards that much here, but I've looked at, you know, I looked at your, your, uh, your Oracle spread right on top. And so we have the cave, the lady and the familiar. All right. So, you know, this person could be hiding out. They could be in retreat. So we see the bear here and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's here and, uh, he's underneath, he's, he's in the cave, right? And there's kind of a little opening here and he is, you know, he has a campfire there. Uh, I don't think bears really do that, but Hey, you know, this person is maybe they're going through some major awakening or they have gone because there's a, there's a huge, like there's this huge, uh, energy in this reading. Like, like they either went through a, a major awakening, a spiritual awakening, or they realize that what they have, what they have done in the past to you is like completely wrong, but there's some type of major, like breakthrough in this reading and it could be all of the above right it could be and so this person i believe is in retreat yeah i feel like they are we have the lady too and this is uh the embodiment card and you know she's the high priestess here she is uh she kind of looks like a little bit like an angel sorta but because she has like i think that's the moon behind her head it is she, there's a raven here She's holding the cup, the knife, uh, and you know, basically she is the high priestess. And then the candle is here. Uh, the bee is here too, which is really interesting because, uh, yeah, the bee can talk about, it can talk about, uh, the cabal and the Illuminati, right? But these people have hijacked like the, the, the evil people. You could be going, who are you talking about? Uh, there's plenty of them walking around here in, in, uh, in California. Trust me. Uh, there are the people with money and they're the people, uh, uh, who, uh, show business. Yeah. Uh, it's not just them, but long story short, they use this B here, but the B was used a long time ago in their symbology. Yes, it is a long time ago. I believe the B was, it could have been like something really good. Right. But you know, they've hijacked everything, right? They've taken, 
uh, symbols from from kids too. I'm not going to say what that symbol is. It's big. It's you know, uh, it's big and it's just big. And they've taken that and they made it their own, right? I'm not saying that those are necessarily those people that I was talking about with the B. I'm just saying that they have hijacked. Uh, They've taken symbols that have been used for years and years or images, and now they're using them themselves. And you're like, well, that doesn't mean that, honey bun, right? But getting back to this, she's the high priestess, Sagittarius, right? And uh, she is. And um, mm -hmm. and he, she has uh, the dove here and then the swan as well. The weed is here. She's kind of like the high, uh, she's kind of like the high priestess and the empress both. But, uh, and then she has this, you know, but this is just somebody who... Uh, is embodying all the beautiful uh in this reading right all those beautiful kind of qualities and uh gifts from the divine right as the high priestess the all-knowing so somebody here did go through an awakening or they're just super uh intuitive right maybe they are they know that uh you're the best the best in the west sagittarius we have the familiar here and uh really interesting here the man sitting at the campfire and he's he looks like he's kind of meditating but Behind him is the wolf and the wolf is above the wolf is this are these lights almost like the wolf is and if you can see him he's not he's only there like he's not really there he is there with the man but he's like in another reality kind of right so this is more uh, of this and the moon is in the back again this is more of this this spiritual energy, this person knows you're a soulmate. This is what this is saying in this reading, right? Let's have a look at the ally. The, the name of that card is the familiar. So this is probably somebody from your past. Either that or your person feels like you are, uh, you know, so, well, I feel like they feel like you're familiar, like you already know this person. But my point about it is that the ally, this person thinks that they're either going to be your ally, but I feel like they think that you are their ally in the spiritual world. Like, because this is very spiritual here with these two, uh, actually, not actually with these three cards, the cave, the lady, uh, and the familiar, because this person who is in retreat is also in some type of spiritual place, right? They're probably dreaming about you every night, Sagittarius, or excuse me here dreaming about you or um <laughs> i don't like my hair today you guys this is my problem right <laughs> but anyway um they're probably dreaming about you but this person knows here right let's have a look uh at the familiar and i'm sure the cave let's maybe we can look at both of those let's see what they have to say here uh because this person wants to be your ally but they think that you are their kind of like their soulmate and they're like their angel like you're here to kind of help them I feel like they want to help you though, right? Help you do what? I just feel like it's probably live a life of love and joy and happiness and be with your soulmate, right? Or your twin flame or uh, your cosmic partner, things like that. I feel like this, part, this person is your divine partner. Yeah, I think they are. So let's see what it says here about the familiar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is the ally, uh, once again, support and friendships. Okay, love is your greatest ally. This person's coming to bring you love because they know that's going to be their best friend. I don't know what they were bringing you before, Sagittarius, but I don't feel like it was, uh, it was uh, support. No, I just don't think it was because it looks like there's, 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 this person is completely stressed out. And I briefly looked at their cards down here and it looks like they're really hoping that you're going to like you're going to support this relationship that they want. You're going to want them back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. See so what it says here. The familiar in witchcraft is like the power animal of, uh, shamanism or shamanism. I like to say shamanism acting as a protector and guide through the astral realms, owls, ravens, cats, and crows will regularly appear as a familiar. Although any creature can volunteer to be guardian and guide, witches' pets were persecuted along with their owners during the Dark Ages. Yeah, they're trying to bring the Dark Ages back here. We're not going to talk about that. No, not your person. Okay, good God, no. They, this person has received the light. I feel like they have. Witches' pets were persecuted. Okay, a cruel fate for all concerned. Of course, right? And we know cats are super... Uh, cats are like spiritual animals. They're... 
you know, I feel like they're totally intuitive. They don't, they don't, they can feel your mood, right? Um, for me, a cat is like a woman. It's like a, that's the, it's the feminine energy, right? Um, but I feel like the dog is more like a man, right? Like masculine energy. Maybe that's why, cause Sagittarius, I'm a Sagittarian too. It's a, it's a masculine sign. Uh, although I'm super feminine. Can you guys tell here? Just teasing. <laughs> but my point about it is that, uh, that's why I'm worried about my hair, right? But the point about it is that, uh, yeah, it's Sagittarius is a masculine sign. Uh, and, you know, uh, and this is probably why they like dogs. I mean, I like dogs better than cats, all right? You could have to do with my asthma when I was a kid, though, right? But, yeah, I like, I like dogs better, right? Plus, I want to go run around with my dog and, you know, sick him on the neighbor. Just kidding, right? Okay, let's see what else it says here. And then it says... All right, and this is love is your greatest ally. Mm -hmm. On a low note, guard your tongue. Be a good friend. Wow, they could be afraid to say, they could be afraid, uh, they could be afraid to say boo, Sagittarius, right? Wow, you're going to turn into a real ghost, right? Or, or you're going to turn them into something, right? And uh, let's see what it says. When the familiar appears, because this person seems worried. Yeah, they do. Okay, there you go. Now you know why I'm saying all this stuff, right? When the familiar appears, it indicates that friendships are highlighted as are allies to your cause. Observe where contact with others is taking you, celebrating harmony and challenging conflict. Yeah, they are going to be careful uh, what to say to you, Sagittarius, because this has been kind of going on, right? This person here, every day, they're like, for those of you that this person is really going to show up, Every day they wake up and they say to themselves, is this the day? Is this the day I'm going to try to contact Sagittarius, right? Yeah, I feel like that's what's going on here. So then it says here, uh, mm -hmm. it says, observe where contact with others is taking you, celebrating harmony and challenging conflict. Yeah, that's what this person wants to do. They want to like, they don't want any conflict here, but this kind of uh, call upon your familiar to watch situations for you. And to warn you of anything demanding careful attention to detail. I feel like this person is paying attention to some detail in their life. And uh, it's it's mostly about you. But I feel like it has to do with uh, some other situation here. But I feel like definitely here that this person thinks that you're a friend, right? And uh, mm -hmm. when the familiar appears, it indicates, okay. And then it says... Call upon your familiar to watch situations for you and to warn you of anything demanding careful attention to detail. Okay, I said that. You may require the help and support of close friends. Don't be afraid to ask for what you need. This person wants to ask you for a reunion. I'm pretty sure here. So I feel like they are afraid to ask you for that. All right. So yeah, they either did something to you, Sagittarius, or... Uh, yeah, or they just they're afraid on some level, right? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know exactly what that what that is, right? And the lady, let's look at here. Let's see what it says about the cave, because this person, I feel like they're in the cave, all right. And it's not a place, uh, Sagittarius, where they want to take you, all right. So just know that. <laughs> and it says uh, the sacral chakra, retreat, gestation, and withdrawal, rebirth is on its way. So this is in the upright. So we have to say that that's what's going on here, right? Yeah. And uh, let me sit up straight here, right? This chair is hard to sit up straight. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. But let's see what else it says here. It says uh, caves and caverns, right? Which cavern is a cave, right? Are symbolic of the womb of the goddess and of the entrance to the underworld. There are places of retreat into the mother's embrace in order to find answers, solutions, or rest. Your person has gone to this retreat to find rest uh, and to seek answers. Yeah. Associated with bear medicine. Or that's why they have the bear here, right? Caves offer the right environment for recuperation. Yeah, there you go. Like a, uh, what do you call that when they uh, hibernate? Yeah. Associate, okay, and then shelter. Uh, let's see, the caves offer the right environment for recuperation and shelter during times of endurance when you have a need for connection or poor weather conditions. Yeah, a time for connection to your strong, to the to your strength, right? 
or to the divine or both. Caves appearing in a reading uh, indicates this is a time of no action and suggests withdrawal from active, active participation. This is your season for preparation, for gestation, and for rest. They're preparing to come, and they needed to, like, charge their batteries, Sagittarius. Treasures are there to be found if you take the time to go within and search for them. With slow and steady application, you can achieve what you have set out to do. This is what they think. Potentials and possibilities are forming within you. Give them the time they need to emerge strong and vibrant and ready for expression in your life. See, this is what they've been doing. Hiding out here to kind of just hiding out to uh, recharge their batteries, as I've said. So let's look at your energy, Sagittarius, which is you have uh, what's on your mind here is the five of wands. And in this uh, particular deck here, these people are fighting, right? Uh, I feel like this is kind of an inner struggle, but we're going to look at that. But this is what's on your mind. The chariot, you want to move forward with this person as well. You do. The seven of wands, this could be in the past. There could have been competition. If there's any competition, this person is cutting out the competition or they have done so. This could be maybe why they are in retreat, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And then what's on your mind here is the two of wands. Let's see what these cards because the two of wands here, this man, of course, he's, you know, this is all about a crossroads, right? But it's about somebody who is choosing to move forward and they have kind of been in that crossroad energy. It's possible here that uh, you felt kind of, kind of sabotaged by this person in the past. Let's see what they say about the five of wands in this particular deck. Yeah, we're using the different deck today altogether. And this is struggle and frustration. Okay, that's what I said. Okay. So the two of wands is right here in your challenge. And this is work is underway. So you're wondering if this person is coming or if they're doing work and I feel like they are doing it. And they could be clearing the way for you. Maybe they're married to somebody. The marriage card is next to the whip, right? This is, uh, it's also called the birch broom, like back in the day. But what it is, is... Uh, it's about, it, it's a whip, right? With this broom kind of at the end. This is kind of a trip here. Oh, the whip is at the end. Oh, maybe they're showing the birch broom with it. I thought it was attached, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's both. But the point about it is that it's a whip and it's about stress and challenges, right? And so uh, maybe you are the one who has been like really challenged here by the situation. But I feel like there's two of wands here. You're wondering here if this person is like, uh, and this is a card of duality. Like you can be choosing between two. It can. The single idea that emerged in the ace is now split into two. Yeah, the two of wands symbolizes the balance between action and passivity. Okay, it can be about also about duality, like uh, in terms of energy, right? Because we know a action is the opposite of passivity. Uh, and this person's trying to weigh that out. And so they have chosen passivity right now before they come forward with the action, which is indicated by the two wands held, one in each hand, right and left. Okay, so he's uh, talking about the picture they painted here. And so let's see what they have to say about this chariot here. We know it's usually uh, getting into your kind of uh, chariot here. And this is a challenging chariot because we have two different color horses and they're both pulling in different directions, right? So that's what's happening here. Let's hear, and let's look at the chariot. Let's see what it has to say. And where is the chariot here? It's only like number eight or nine. Let's see what it says here. These are not uh, numbered, no. Oh, in this deck, it looks like they have it as seven, uh, struggle and tension. Yeah, that's why they're kind of, so this is what's on your mind. An inner struggle, struggle and tension, stiff competition. You could be, for some of you guys, you know this person's coming and you're wondering if they're in this, if they're in this kind of reality right now. Like if they're in this situation, right, where they're dealing with struggle and tension and frustration, I feel like they were and that's why they've retreated. And here they are looking outside, Sagittarius. The bear is there and he's looking outside. Is Sagittarius knocking on the door to the cave? <laughs> right? Is Sagittarius there? It's, it's, that's, I feel like that's kind of it. This, the bear's looking outside, like, is it time to come out? Uh, but you know, mm, I don't, I still think it's snowing. I don't think the bears come out until the snow melts, right? I don't think that they retreat from their caves until, 
until the snow melts, right? Yeah, and this, you know, it's really interesting here. Everybody has to kind of uh, like trust in the animals, right? Uh, because they are so wise. So with the bears, they know they have to, I don't know how long they retreat. I feel like it's probably three months or so uh, during winter, but we all have to do that sometimes, right? We all have to understand the cycles of our body uh, and our emotions and things like that so we can like retreat when necessary, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, here the Queen of Swords, Sagittarius, this is what you're hoping for. Uh, and she's kind of, uh, let's have a look at her because, uh, you know, Hmm, let's see what it says about this queen of swords. Where is she? So today I was watching uh, Ismael Perez or Perez, right? Uh, Perez and so, or whatever, but long story short, he's a galactic star seed. So I don't know if you guys believe in that stuff. And I shouldn't be kind of, I'm kind of discrediting it when I say believe in that stuff, right? It sounds like, it sounds like they're in the back room, uh, you know, whipping up some black magic. And uh, I don't know, they have a dead cat and, you know, and some type of a, <coughs> uh, I don't know, like uh, some hairs from, you know, or, or part of a dead skull. Uh, not all skulls are dead, right? But <laughs> it's not that. In fact, uh, he is, if you guys learn about him, uh, he's saying here that we're, most of the people here, like the planet will... <coughs> the planet will all ascend. Uh, not all, but uh, he's saying at least 50, I think he said 70%. And 50% of the people will go to uh, the 5D and some will, you know, will only go to the 4D, but which is a dimension, right? But long story short, uh, and he's saying that, uh, that there's going to be a new government. And we're not talking about, you know, these people who are walking around in their, you know, these people that have been uh, installed, yeah, they've all been put there. Nobody, nobody, uh, they've just been put there, all right? So long story short, though, really interesting. He was talking about, uh, you guys should go, you should hear what he has to say. It's so fascinating. I mean, there's no way I can sit here and uh, even, uh, yeah, and even really kind of, you know, say much about it because it's very rich and he has interviews all over uh, all over YouTube, right? I had put one on my kind of link to uh, put the link on my website, but that's been taken down. Uh, but by me, right? But long story short, he was saying, uh, this is why the king and the, uh, the queen of England, who's now dead, right? I feel like she, she might've passed away, uh, previously, but long story short, um, I'll just tell you this part because some of the people won't be able to deal with any of this. They're like, what? You know, but some people who watch tarot know that, uh, that there's far more to divination than just tarot, right? It kind of just uh, cracks, what do they call it? Uh, I don't know, cracks the iceberg or tips the iceberg, right? But he was saying that uh, they didn't like Diana because Diana was uh, was related to the 12 Knights of the Round Table, right? And so, uh, and that she was really uh, 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 like a divine person and they are not. She, he's saying that they're Germans, they're not even that's not the real monarchy. So we're not, you know, we're not here to talk about that, but that's really highly interesting. Uh, and you know, Diana passed away. Right. And it was so, you know, uh, anyway, it's really interesting. Right. And, uh, no, they didn't like her at all. Uh, otherwise she'd still be there uh, in my opinion. Uh, but really interesting. Go check out, uh, Ismael Perez. Right. And so, yeah, you can type him in, just type him into, uh, on this, platform. So let's see what it says about the queen of swords, Sagittarius. Yeah. He's fascinating that guy. And let's see what it says. Right. Oh, and he also said that, you know, and to help you ascend, he has a shake, right? But, uh, I'm, not, I'm even discrediting it by saying a shake. It's a cleanse, right? But I don't know about it yet. No, I'm probably going to get it. But my long, my, the long of the short is what he was saying, which is really interesting. Uh, oh, is that, you know, I, sometimes I recommend eating organic food, right? I always kind of do that, but, uh, he's saying here, not only does it help your health, but the chemicals that they, they treat these, that they spray these, uh, vegetables and fruits with, you know, they, uh, clog your brain or your pineal gland. So this is stopping you from ascending. Right. And I totally believe that because, uh, because of the glyphosate, uh, which is a pesticide, right? And uh, it's over there at, you know, your local uh, hardware store. It is. And don't use it because it causes major cancer and Alzheimer's and 
uh, muscular, muscular, yeah, all kinds of nerve uh, problems. So let's get back to the reading, Sagittarius, because you might be, you know, yeah, really interesting how he said, because I knew that. I knew it was good for my physical health, but come on, Denise, if it's good for your physical health, it's good for your, your mental health, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we'll get back to this. And the Queen of Swords, let's see what, you, let's see what she is, what she's doing, suffering with dignity and resignation. You could be wondering if this person is suffering with dignity and resignation. I feel like they've resigned from something, like left something. And this is why they're in the cave now, Sagittarius, right? Because the cave even talks about an ending of something, doesn't it? It talks about the ending of active, an active cycle. So this person ended something in their life. And I'm not sure what it is, right? No, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not exactly here, but... Uh, they could be suffering in dignity and resignation and dignity, or maybe you were, maybe you had stiff competition here with the seven of wands and, uh, he's here by himself though, which is kind of interesting, but it talks about competition <laughs> because he's really, uh, he's very overwhelmed and stressed out there. Right. And so you could have been maybe like, uh, dealing with your own, you could have resigned because of your own dignity. Right. I mean, I could see doing that, right. If somebody's kind of stringing you along or just mistreating you or you know maybe maybe not a direct mistreating but you know it's not going to go anywhere it's a lower vibration you might resign i have to do this for my dignity right uh and you know people do that all the time i mean i've done that in the past like, this isn't any good for me i need to step back and let this go and uh and you know be in my power and be in my dignity right yeah and so you could be wondering if this person is doing this, the page of cups, you're fearing here that you're not going to have a new beginning or that, uh, things are maybe not going to change on some type of level. Like, uh, with regard to feelings, I feel like this person is coming back and, uh, they're going through something really difficult and you are kind of fearing here that they're not kind of going to show up for you. It could be. You could be feeling that this person is too stressed out and they may not show up like they're dealing with too much in their life, right? You could be, you could be, uh, possibly thinking that let's look at the page of cups. Let's see what they say here because, uh, they have a different, they have a different for all of this. Yes, they do mostly. Uh, and the page, where's the page at? Here he is. This is new beginnings on a feeling level. <laughs> which is, you know, new beginnings in love basically. But, uh, let's see here. All the pages are represented by youth because they stand for something in its infancy. Yeah. It starts like a new start, like at the first, like an apprenticeship, like at the first level. And you're wondering here, or you're, I feel like you're doubting possibly you could be doubting. You're not going to have this new beginning with them, uh, or a new start with them because they're suffering with some type of maybe ego, maybe dignity and resignation, uh, uh, kind of, but you know, it's a whole kind of a different, uh, dignity is, I mean, ego is a different, it's kind of a, it's very, very rich here, but maybe, you know, there are sometimes if you're trying to maintain your dignity, uh, you know, it could be because there's too much ego that you're involved with kind of right. Or too many games or something like that. Right. So your person, the challenge for them is choice and ambitions. And your challenge was the two of wands. This also talks about making a choice, this work underway, but he's choosing here, the man uh, with the orange outfit on and your person's challenge is choosing choice and ambitions, right? Showing up as the lobster. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so your person has the 10 of they have the 10 of uh, acorns, which is wands. They have the 10 of feathers, which is the 10 of swords. And so here they have two, uh, two endings, two completions. So your person, what's on their mind is the 10 of swords in this deck here, uh, with this kindred author, right? We see the snake, but this person here, your person is wondering if they're going to recover this, the 10 of swords. Yeah. The 10 of feathers, if they're going to recover this, uh, and if they're going to be able to transform it with you, you guys are very much mirroring each other, but from a different aspect, kind of. Because this person is dealing with, I'm not sure who's dealing with so much, uh, with so much kind of stress here. It's not entirely, you look like it's you, but I feel like you're wondering about them. Yeah, it's kind of looks like that. 
So, you know, what's on their mind? Security and abundance. The nine of pentacles, right? Which is usually the rich woman. Here they got a, uh, here they have a huge spider here. <laughs> and so your person is like wondering if, uh, and responsibility and dedication. I feel like your person probably ended something here. The 10 of wands that was maybe burdening here because the, this person looks at it, uh, like in a duality, like in kind of in a dual way, like instead of a burden, like responsibility. Right. And so, uh, and this is your person here is wondering here if basically, uh, I feel like they're just ending something, but they're wondering if you're going to dedicate themselves to you. I feel like it's possible this person feel, feels responsible like to come forward, Sagittarius, uh, because they love you. I feel like that's it. They love you and I feel like they think you're a soulmate in this reading. I feel like they do here. They know you're that you are their empress, right? You're coming with, you know, you're coming with all this abundance, but this abundance is like to feed their soul, Sagittarius. This person... Yeah, they know here. Maybe they know you're a good cook, right? You got your little wheat, your wheat here. Maybe you're going to, uh, it looks like a lot of work to me, Sagittarius, right? Maybe you're going to make, uh, like delicious Afghan bread. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I feel like it's more natural probably. Right. Uh, than what the, you know, than what they got over there, uh, at the store. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. and so let's get back to this reading. Right. And so your person here, uh, is wondering if they can transform this with you, if they're going to have security and abundance showing up twice. So we know the, the angel of abundance is about them. This is what they're wondering here. Uh, and all these cards are beautiful here. That's what they're wondering about you. What you're wondering about them is, are, are they really kind of stressed out? And I feel like you are, or are they going to show up? Yeah, I don't know if you're really stressed out here. I feel like it's more like maybe in the past you had to compete with somebody. They could have left somebody to be with you because this person's dedicated. Yeah, willing and able, right? No willing and able. Put my cards on the table. This person is still in love with you. I feel like they are. And this is their desire. Five of acorns, challenge and growth. This is what they want. They want challenge and growth. Look at him. He's a, I don't know if he's a, I mean, she's coloring these uh, images with pastel. It's a great artist whoever did this super detail, right? But, uh, you know, uh, this is either a panther. It kind of looks like that, uh, but this is challenge and growth. And look, he's kind of like, he has his mouth open. Like, I really want this, right? And in their fear is going to be the hermit. This is contemplation and wisdom Sagittarius they're afraid here this person might be a Virgo but they're afraid here uh, they're contemplating to come forward they could be afraid here that you won't see the wisdom they've gained because they have gained major wisdom here because there's a feeling in this reading Sagittarius uh, with the oracle spread and you know and then their cards and a little bit of kind of reflection of your uh, energy here the, there's a like a a feeling here that they've done something wrong in the past or that they had to really grow or kind of maybe also figure out how to approach you kind of, or how to approach this, this person, I feel like they found out, they went through an awakening and found out that they love you. So we're going to end the reading and in the extended, we're going to go ahead. Uh, this reading is getting really long. We're going to go ahead and do the, uh, the gypsy spread and we're going to start it here. So your persons, this is always their reading. Yeah. I always say that. Right. Uh, and so this is the journey card and this is uh, much like the world card. He's leaving and he's going somewhere on his, on his horse. Let's see. And this is, uh, we're going to clarify these and we're going to talk all about them. We are, uh, and you know, really go over them. The servant is in the past for them. We're going to talk about that. No, it's not uh, a house cleaner. No, it's usually not. <laughs> we have the gift coming into play. Yeah, we do. And we have the gift again. Oh my God, here. Uh, we're going to talk about this. And we have the soldier, uh, the messenger. Okay. So uh, very cool. They're all super affordable. I always have the link below, Sagittarius. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining me here. God bless you guys. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe.